you've got mail and you have jury duty and you live in New York City. No. <laughs> Let's talk about it on Asmuth Podcast. I'm Kimberly McNabb and with me as always is Barrett McNabb. So these jurors are going through the most famous trial in America right now, the quote unquote Trump hush money case. Yeah, you know, it's not really a hush money case um, because paying somebody and getting them to sign a non-disclosure agreement is not against the law. So I think the media has really misbranded this uh, this hush, hush money case. What it is, is a documentation uh, error and whether or not legal expenses paid to uh, Trump's attorney, Michael Cohen, constituted legal expenses or if they were to subvert the 2016 election. So this is really an election interference case, according to the DA Bragg. Okay, so that's how they revamped a, a misdemeanor that into ran a felony out of statute of limitations as well. R- right. Yeah. So that's how they're that's how they're pushing this uh, what would be a misdemeanor into a felony. Right. And I think it's a huge stretch personally. Right. Now, there's a list of 42 questions that all these jurors are having to go through. For one thing, they're having to select, what was it, 50 jurors, which is a bit more... Well, so uh, they're, they're selecting, I think, bigger. yeah, it's a, it's a much larger... There's probably going to be hundreds of jurors that are going to be, um, uh, you know, going through the process called Vordier, Vordier and um, it uh, is going to be 12 jurors with six alternates, uh, I believe, are ultimately going to be selected, but they're going to have to go through a huge pool uh, during this Vordier uh, process in order to make sure that they uh, eliminate various biases. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't see how he's going to get quote, a fair trial. And of course, neither lawyer wants a quote, fair trial. They want it to go their way. <laughs> right. that, that's how they judge being fair. Uh, but Trump is literally the most famous man probably in the world. I mean, he could be dropped off in the middle of Uganda and go, oh, it's the dawn, you know. So, <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that's the big. And everyone has opinions one way or the other. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the, the problem. And, and Trump's attorneys have already raised the issue. Uh, they made a motion to, to have the judge uh, recuse himself from the case because uh, he's a strong Democrat. His daughter is a strong Democrat and, and feels that the judge himself wouldn't be able to be impartial. They've asked for a change of venue to get the trial out of Manhattan, uh, because on the by and by, there are probably a ton of Democrats uh, in New York City, and he's probably not going to get an opportunity to have an unbiased uh, jurist pool. Yeah, exactly. And that's why they need such a large pool. So, uh, Barrett, what are some of the questions? Yeah, uh, so, there's 40, so there's 42, 42 questions, and some of them are really benign. Um, I'm going to read one verbatim just to, to, to show you that how it's, how it's being worded. But without telling us your address, in what neighborhood do you live? For example, Upper East Side, Lower East Side, Inwood, etc. How long have you lived there? Are you a native New Yorker? If not, where did you live previously? Um, and then it, it has questions of, of like, what did what do you do for um, work. for work? Uh, if you're retired, what did you previously do for work? So a lot of these are just benign getting to well, know it, you questions. There could be some implications, like which neighborhood of New York City do you live in? Sure. I'd imagine some are a little more, on average, a little more left-leaning than, than, than others. And then, I, I mean, I... It's New York, so I'm just generalizing outside of New York based on my experience, but older people tend to be a little more conservative. But again, it's New York. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, of the Could boroughs, there, there, there are Republican strongholds in, in some of the boroughs uh, of New York City. And yeah, so, so they're probably trying to gauge, feel yeah, you out. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, some of them get a little bit more detailed, um, and it's how do you consume your information? And so I'm not going to read this verb- verbatim because it's long, but it's uh, which of the following print, uh, cable, or network programs or online media, uh, such as websites, uh, do you watch? New York Times, USA Today, Fox podcast, News, Podcast, TikTok. And so they really want to know how you get your news. Um, and it's a great lead into uh, our video last week. 
week on whether or not uh, reading the news or podcast. We'll put a, a link uh, up here to that video. But still, it, they they want to know how you how you get your news. Well, and which ones you subscribe to? Sure, because as there's well. biases uh, in the media. Well, I mean, you know, I think everyone's going to have at least a little bias, or, sure. or at least most anybody who watches or reads about the news at all. Uh, some people don't. Uh, but I think the bigger question is going to be how can we root out the most extreme people, whether they're, you know, QAnon, you know, ultra MAGA, Trump only type of voters, or are they orange man bad, Marxism good, you right. know, type, type of people. Um, and I do think. Um, is, does that list include who they voted for? Yeah, it actually, it says, you know, who, who did you vote for? Um, and then uh, it also uh, talks about, um, you know, do you even follow Trump on social media? Now, there are people who follow Trump on social media in order to directly criticize him. Right. And there's people that follow Trump on social media because they like what he puts out. So there's, you know, going to be a mix. So I don't I don't understand. I guess the, the bias there is if, yes, I follow Trump on social media so I can criticize him. Well, then they know that you are biased uh, anti-Trump. Right. Well, I mean, like some people watch The View just so they can take out clips and make fun of them. Oh, right, right. Yep, that's <laughs> so true. It's just the flip side. A lot of people are guilty of doing that type of thing. Yeah, it's amazing um, for um, a group of ladies named Whoopi, Joy, and Sunny, just how negative they are. Yeah, they're very vicious, but the names are very deceptive. Exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, here's, this is a, an interesting one. Have you ever, uh, have a relative or have you ever volunteered for the Trump presidential campaign? Have you attended any of his political rallies? Um, and it's really, this is a really long uh, question. I'm not going to read it all to you. But, uh, you know, have you ever signed up for one of his newsletters or anything like that? And they really, this is very detailed how mm -hmm. they, they want to get into the weeds on on whether or not, um, you know, you're, you're going to be able to be, you know, unbiased or to weed out well, if you are biased. Yeah, I listened to the um, the Durst show with Alan Dershowitz, right? Um, and he um, defended, I believe, uh, Trump in one of his, um, his impeachment. Was it right? Um, yes. Now he did not vote for Trump, and, and okay. as of right now, he doesn't plan to. Uh, but he covered some of the questions, and you know, he he's taught law at Harvard. He he's been in the legal field for sixty years, right? Um, and he said that if you're going to ask a question about Trump, you also need to ask it about Biden. You know what? You know, uh, one of the questions he had was, uh, "Do you have strong opinions about Trump?" Well, okay, a lot of people do, but then goes on to say, "Do you have strong opinions about Trump that would interfere with your ability to be a fair and impartial juror?" And that's kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it a leading question or if it's not really a question; it's more of an answer. Uh, so it's not a very good question. Well, um, interesting that that, that question says. it was that was number forty two. Um, and yesterday, approximately fifty people raised their hand and said, "Yeah, I I can't be um, unbiased about this trial." And you know, good for them. Yeah. That's that's a group of people with integrity. Uh, that you know, at least they said, "Look, I can't I can't be unbiased." And and by self identifying uh, yourself, obviously. Um, you know, I don't agree with you that um, you're p probably with your political persuasion, but but still you have integrity and good on those 50 people. But like I said, you know, to have 50 people just just on question 42, just get dismissed, you know, they're going to go through a lot of people. Right. And also um, people need to answer that, you know, these questions, honestly, sure. because I would imagine that the lawyers um, are going to go through people's social media and. You know, oh, yeah. Um, you know, figure it out. Yeah, for a typical trial uh, during this uh, Verdire uh, process, um, there are, you know, X amount of, of people in the jury pool. Each state and county are going to have different numbers, but I want to say approximately 50. And the um, prosecution and the defense are going to get a set number of automatic strikes. Mm -hmm. um, and so they can, and I think it's usually about 10. And so without, it's called a presumptive challenge, without any 
rationale or reason that you have to identify, uh, you can just strike that person and just say, jury number 12, I just don't like the fact that he has an earring in his ear. He's gone. And, right. and now you don't you don't say that, obviously, uh, but you keep that in your head. But literally, it could be anything uh you know, the, the jury walked, jurist walked in and, uh, and glared at your client. Boom, you're, you're gone. Um, right. I'm not, not going to worry about the questionnaire. And so normally it's about 10. I, I've got to think uh, that there's going to be more presumptive challenges uh, yeah. or prevent, uh, uh, challenges available to both the prosecution and the defense in this just to make up for the fact that well, they're going to have to go through a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would think that you know there are people like that who are going to be honest about hey i can't be impartial uh, right. but there may be some people who lie to yeah. get to get on this because i want orange man to go down and you know there may be some people who want to get on to try to help him i i don't know i i would say in new york that number's probably pretty slim but right if i did give some advice to them i would say dress very well because they're going to assume that people who look like they're working class are going to vote for trump that's that's what the prosecutors are going to assume so if you dress a little more nicely they're going to think you're a little more professional and a little more you know uh college educated left wing right well and that, that's a great point because a lot of courtrooms have a dress code um, oh yes yeah, so you're and, supposed to anyway and you're supposed to to dress uh, appropriately um for your your summons but still this is just going to be absolutely in- incredible to see how this trial progresses i mean just the very beginning of it of jury selection mm-hmm. is just a a dog and pony show, uh, you know, for this. And then we, we're going to have their key witness, Michael Cohen, is going to be testifying, but he's already been convicted of perjury, mm-hmm. uh, lying to Congress. So the Trump attorneys are going to say, look, you're taking the testimony of a convicted liar, um, you know, to do this. I, I just, I, this, this is such a stretch. The federal government declined to prosecute. Um, and so we, now we have a state DA uh, or a city DA that's um, uh, you know, trying to, to make this legal stretch uh, and do some intellectual gymnastics in order to, to make this shoe fit on, on Trump's foot. Yeah, well, I, I hope the jurors understand what a stretch right. it is. I hope that is presented to them. Yeah, if they get wrapped around the axle of Stormy Daniels and sex with porn stars mm-hmm. and things like that, it that Make is it incendiary. Yeah, that that is just you're not able to see the forest through the trees, um, mm-hmm. and you need to to concentrate on whether or not uh, the entries, the business entries for legal expenses, was accurate or not accurate. And again, yeah. it's been stretched uh, for the misdemeanor of whether the business entry was accurate and accurate all the way to the felony of did he do this to do election interference well even one of the questions is have you or anyone in your family worked in accounting or finance right uh, so yeah i would imagine the prosecutors would love someone who answers yes to that yeah I- exactly i mean there was um an, an instance where i was in a mock uh, trial, and it was for attorneys to practice, um, you know, while they're in law school and things like that. And so I was on the uh, jury panel, and a question got asked: uh, Is it possible that law enforcement could lie? And I was the only one that raised my hand and said, "It, you know, it's possible that law enforcement could lie." And um, and so uh, he asked he asked a follow up question to that and, and explain explain yourself. And uh, and so I, I, it was an, an instance that um, when I was in uh, college, um, I was uh, at a after uh, hours party in an apartment complex. And it, uh, you know, it was just a keg party, and and it was a uh, and a set of apartments that were kind of formed a, a U, and there was a grass area on the in, inside, and um, you know everybody's having a good time, and all of a sudden uh, I get hit with a floodlight, and a hand is on my shoulder, and uh, I turn around, and it's a police officer, and he says, uh, "I need your driver's license," and I said, "No problem, officer. I'm over 21," and and. and I had a beer in my hand, and he said, well, that's not what this ticket is for. Uh, This ticket is for drinking after hours. 
And it turns out in Huntsville, Texas, uh, where I went to school at Sam Houston State University, that it is a crime, a misdemeanor, to consume alcoholic beverages 15 minutes after the bar closes. And that includes in your house. So if you're drinking a beer in your house 15 minutes after the bar closes and your blinds are open and a police officer sees you consuming alcohol, he could still get a ticket. That's what communism looks like. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, I was unaware of this obscure uh, uh, law. And um, so the police officer was going around and, and grabbing up people's IDs. I had a dark beer um, that's a local beer here in Texas called Shinerbach. It's delicious. If you have not had it, go seek it out. Uh, not a paid sponsor at all. Um, but I had a, a dark beer um, uh, called Shinerbach, and I uh, went ahead and, and, and tossed it. I went to uh, the house that the or the apartment that the house party was was having and I everybody was hiding and there's probably I don't know 200 people crammed in the apartment you know with blinds opening up people staring out anyway I knock on the door and I say give me a coca-cola and they said no go away and I said give me a coca-cola or I'm not leaving and so anyway the door opens a little bit a can of coca-cola comes out and then the door uh, closes so I, I pour the coca-cola into my cup and it is the exact same shade of dark. Um, and like I said, Schinerbach is a, is a dark beer. They look almost the same. And so I'm drinking my Coca-Cola. And I walk up back up to the cop and he goes, I'm glad you came back. I've got, and I said, well, you have my driver's license. You know who I am. I didn't go anywhere. And I'm drinking my Coca-Cola. And he said, well, that's, that's pretty uh, ballsy of you. To, to keep drinking. And I said, well, I don't know what you're talking about, officer. I've been drinking Coca-Cola this whole time. And he takes the, the cup from me and smells it. <laughs> and he said, you had a Jack Daniels and Coca-Cola in this glass. I could smell the whiskey. And immediately I'm like, that is horseshit uh, <laughs> because I had a beer. Uh, in in there. I did not have a Jack and Coke. And so anyway, he testified that uh, through his smell that it was a whiskey and Coca-Cola because I did I did ask uh, uh, for, um, you know, a jury trial. It was it really I wound up pleading no contest because I just wasn't going to win against the cop. But anyway, I had a dark beer that I was drinking and he testified that I had a whiskey and Coke. And uh, it was not true. I did, turns out I, I w- was breaking the law, but I had a beer and he <laughs> lied. And so I explained that story and everybody just laughed. Um, but it's true. I mean, is it possible that a law enforcement officer lies? Well, yes, they're yes, human. Yes, they're human. We're, we're all human beings. We're all flawed. And yes, we all lie at some point in our right. lives. But if you're, if you're still out there and you're still in <laughs> law enforcement, it was not a whiskey. You lied. Uh, you <laughs> perjured yourself on the stand. Uh, I had a beer and, and not a whiskey and Coke. But still, we, you know, this is just going to go to the crux of how divided we are as a nation. And this is going to be a little teeny microcosm of, of that, except it's heavily weighted against Trump. Um, I, I just cannot believe that, that, that they're going to find uh, you know, 12 perfectly unbiased people yeah. um, and uh, and six unbiased alternates. Uh, yeah, I mean, the best th- that they're going to be able to do is find people that don't really follow politics right? Um, and people that aren't extremists one way or the other. Right. I mean, yeah. So we saw this, and, and this is going to be ongoing. Well, I'm sure we'll get a, a number of opportunities to talk about this in the future. But uh, day one is down, and now we're on day two of this uh, of this dog and pony show. So thank you so much for watching Azimuth Podcast. Please stay tuned after these messages. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy our show with all the stories we share, we would love your support. And it's as easy as clicking that subscribe or follow button. This will ensure you never miss an episode and keeps us bringing you these important stories. Your support makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast family. Thanks, and keep tuning in.